So the foods that we eat make a lot of difference on what's happening on the outside. And a lot of people end up spending a lot of time, money, extra expense, women especially, on skin care, on hair care, on nail care from the outside in when the key is inside of you. And if you can get this one made nutrient under control, you'll see the results celebrities are seeing like Jennifer Aniston at boosting your body's natural beauty. So the key connective tissue element, that thing that holds everything together, your skin together, the tightness of your skin, the strength of your hair and your skin and your nails comes from collagen. Collagen is one of the main connective tissue elements that we need in our body to hold everything together and you need a high dose of it, but oftentimes because of the diets that we eat, we're massively depleting it. So how can you, with three simple foods, crank up the collagen and honestly crank up the beauty? Number one, Bone broth. Bone broth actually takes bones and meat, and what you do is you actually take the bone and then you um, seep it for 24 to 48 hours and draw the marrow and the collagen out of the bones, and then you drink it like soup, like a broth, um, exactly the way it sounds. And that is a huge source of collagen. So you can make your own bone broth. There's a lot of really good recipes on our website and you can um, go through step by step, add herbs to it, add vegetables to it, but that's a great way to get collagen in, especially during the cold time of year. Number two way to get collagen in is to eat the precursor of collagen, and that's vitamin C. So any citrusy type fruit is gonna be a great source. Um, here I have a peach, you could go with oranges. Um, any high amounts of vitamin C are gonna be the precursors so your body will make more collagen for the pretty nails and the pretty hair as well as eggs. Eggs are actually are one of the few foods that have collagen in them. So my house, we eat a lot of eggs, make sure they're clean, natural, organic, um, so you're not absorbing toxins, but they are a great source of collagen into the system um, that you can load up on. How much collagen do you need in a day? If you want to strengthen the nails and you want to you know, amplify the hair growth and get the skin really shining and have a tighter, less wrinkly type skin, I would get 15 grams per day. Now, if you are really thinning out and you do have a lot of issues with the nail um, or the system is very sensitive, I would go up to 30 grams a day. Okay, if you're super interested in collagen then and what it can do for your skin, your hair, your nails, I wanna challenge you to do a collagen cleanse. Now, this is collagen loading where for two to three days, you're loading up on this protein loaded with amino acids, allowing it to repair your gut, replenishing the stores in your body, then you can back down off of it and you're gonna utilize collagen rich foods. You're gonna put a lot of bone broth in or you're gonna use powdered collagen to load the body up on it and you're gonna be cleansing, which is meaning you're gonna be lowering insulin in your body, you're gonna be abstaining from eating, you're gonna be activating autophagy, which is your body's cleanup system, all while you're giving it its main repair substance. So you're helping out your joints, you're helping out your system. So this is a collagen cleanse. Today we're gonna be making the collagen cleanse, great three-day cleanse to really heal up and repair your gut, especially after a long stretch of bad nutrition, maybe a holiday, maybe we all fall victim to it, but this is super gut friendly. So with it, um, I thought I would just make a couple of recipes and show you how easy this is. I have them right in front of me, pulled up on my phone, um, which you can get access to this entire protocol. Um, in the mornings, what you'll be doing basically is drinking fermented beverages. So here's two of my favorites. Uh, they are consistently in the fridge behind me. Kombucha, which you can get a lot of places. And these are fermented beverages. And fermented beverages are loaded with probiotics which your gut loves. They also promote weight loss, good response after a bad eating stretch. So those are going to boost the immune system and help heal things. The other thing that can repair the gut is collagen. So hence this being the collagen cleanse, we're gonna make one of my favorite collagen smoothies that for myself, I can drink this for a couple day period of time, no problem if this is all I have because I enjoy it so much and it is super simple. Check this out. Um, so you can literally do this with just a couple of ingredients. So I've got my blender here and we're gonna throw in number one, some uh, sneak in some ingredients, uh, um, excuse me, some nutrients. A lot of times we don't get, so from a perspective of actually getting green food, we don't oftentimes do this. So I'm gonna start with a handful of spinach and put that at the bottom of the blender. You won't even taste it. When's the last time you had like a bowl of spinach by itself? I mean, it just doesn't happen that often unless you're eating a salad. So nutrients are in, and then we wanna get our liquids in. So we're gonna do a, I usually do pretty much a whole can of coconut milk. You can do a half can. It kinda of just depends how much you're making, um, but I wanna make sure we have enough liquid in there in order to blend everything up. We can add water as we go if we want. And then some blueberries, so it's simple. Wherever you're at, even if you're out um, and about, you're on a lunch break and you need to grab a meal during this cleanse, 
you can get a uh, um, blueberry smoothie no problem in this regard. So probably about half of what I would do there. If you really like the berries, add more in. But you can get this literally anywhere when you're out and about. So now we got those two ingredients in and we're gonna add some almond butter. A big old scoop of almond butter um, on top of those blueberries. It's a fantastic mix. And so I'll just put a big one of those in and we will put that right on top. Make sure it gets blended really well. And I always like to lick the spoon. I'll spare you from that though. So, okay. Now, secret ingredient, collagen. We need tons of it. So um, whey protein tends to spike blood sugar levels. So I use collagen protein, plus it's super gut friendly. So my collagen protein is already flavored in vanilla or chocolate. So you can grab whatever it fits your fancy. I used to do vanilla because I can use it um, with berry mixes or I can use it with more chocolatey mixes. But I do one heaping scoop of that. Um, and this one I'm doing multiple times per day during this cleanse. So there it is. I usually add just a touch more water. You can also add another gut helper in the form of probiotics. So I'll sprinkle in, I kind of have an idea of just putting a little bit on top, about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon is plenty. You're getting about 40 billion probiotics there. So there it is, it's a gut bomb in that regard. Your gut is gonna love it. So let's add a little bit of water to it. And blend this thing up. Don't mind my blender while I do this, uh, but I just want to show you how quick, how easy this actually is in the morning where you can actually blend this thing up and you can do this in minutes. So even if you're out and about and you're getting lunch or you're on the go, as I was saying earlier, you can have them make this in a lot of health food stores. And oftentimes I'll even just take my collagen protein with and have them put that in so you can do this cleanse for a couple of days. That's it. The meal's done. You're going to sip off this throughout the um, day and throughout the week and uh, add in your fermented beverages. And this is a great way that you can rebound and cleanse the gut, load up with collagen, get the weight off, get the inflammation down and allow your body to heal. Mm -hmm. That was good stuff. Stop eating this if you have inflammation or pain inside of your body. You're sabotaging yourself. I'm gonna break down for you the one food that you've gotta get out of your system if you are inflamed, if you have joints that are hurting, if you have brain fog, if you're just in pain in your muscles in day-to-day -day basis, any kind of itis and arthritis, any kind of autoimmune condition, this one food has got to go. I think this topic is actually more important than sugar and carbohydrates. That's how big a deal this is. Let's visit Fats, okay? Fats, specifically omega-6 and omega-3. What we understood many years ago through research is there's a process inside of your body for creating inflammation. And the two drivers of this process are omega-6s and omega-3s. So when Dr. Dyerberg, the inventor and the discoverer of these, found that people in Iceland and uh, you know, native areas of like this, they had a lot less heart disease, cholesterol problems, these kind of chronic inflammatory conditions. And he wondered why, what was different? He looked at their diet and their diet consisted in high amounts of fats and fish proteins, right? Because they were in areas where they didn't really have any vegetables or grains compared to the standard American diet. And he started studying their blood work and that's when he discovered omega-6 and omega-3. Specifically, the ratio that they had compared to the ratio that a standard American had. Now, here's what it should be, and this is what those indigenous people were at. When you look at the amount of omega-6s compared to the omega-3s, inside of your body, ideally, you want one omega-3 for every four omega-6s, or in the Eskimos condition in place, it was actually a one-to-one -one ratio. So there was one omega-3 for every omega-6. Now, why this matters, if it's anywhere from four to one or below, your inflammation is going to be way down, way down. And that's what they found inside of their blood. Now, the standard American diet at the same time was a 20 to one ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s. When you looked at the food they were eating, like fish, or if you wanted to compare beef, for example, those animals have a ratio at four to one or below when they're in grass-fed, wild-caught form. But over in the standard American diet, when you have the 
McDonald's burger, that meat, processed meat, is 20 to 1. So there's a direct correlation of the type of fat, the type of fat that maybe comes from a protein or an animal source or a plant source, I'm about to show you in a second, can be high in inflammation if it's high in omega-6s, you're inflamed, you're in pain, you're at risk of chronic disease. If it's lower in omega-6s and higher in omega-3s, you're going to be in a state of way less inflammation and way less disease. Dr. Dyerberg studied that and started studying the foods, and more on him in just a moment, some really cool stuff. Omega-6s. These are found in the oils that we're using in a lot of our foods. We're frying the French fries in it, the crackers, the pancakes, the tortilla shell. All these foods have canola oils, vegetable oils, soy oils, cotseed oils, sunflower oils, the linoleic version, margarines, all of these loaded with omega-6s, way high over here. Very few omega-3s. Now those are the rotten, rancid version of omega-6s. You still need some omega-6s in your body. The healthier oils that have those are borage, ahi flour, olive, and avocado. This is why you wanna make sure you don't heat olive too high because it can turn into one of these rancid ones if you do. Avocado is pretty stable. It's got a 13 to one ratio, mostly because it just doesn't contain very many omega-3s, but it does give you healthy sixes so you don't have to fear it, okay? So those are your unclean sixes that are found in a lot of unhealthy foods. This would include processed meats, meat that are inhumanely raised, meats that uh, where cows are fed grain instead of grass. It inflames them. The more grain we eat, the more sugars we eat, the more omega-6s, the more bad oils that go in. Now, for the omega-3 side of things, the oils we want to look at, there's three types. There's EPA, DHA, and ALA. EPA really supports your joints, the inflammation, and the pain that you're feeling. It's also very good for mental health. DHA is like the brain contributor. Six to eight percent of your brain is made up of DHA. So talking about depression and how inflaming your brain can create depression or anxiety, that's what does it. And then ALA is still powerful, but not nearly as powerful at reducing pain and inflammation inside of your body as EPA and DHA. ALA comes from plant-based sources. We still need some of it. Your body can still use it. It is still anti-inflammatory and contains omega-3s, but EPA and DHA have a lot more impact on the inflammation to get you over to this side of the equation. So flax, chia, coconut, those are gonna be all your sources of ALA and they're great sources, one to four ratio. It's a flipped ratio. It's an ALA ratio, but it's a flipped omega sixes to omega threes. Chia, a one to three ratio, omega six to omega threes. So those are great options to be adding to a smoothie or adding into things that you cook with. Next, fish, butter, make sure it's grass fed, lard, great sources of omega-3s, and we start getting in EPA and DHA, especially when it comes to fish. When you're buying meats, it needs to be grass-fed, wild-caught, or free-range when it comes to beef, fish, chicken. Loading up on omega-3s is the way to decrease inflammation, decreasing the omega-6s. I'm gonna break down seven ways to improve your second brain. This is literally your gut, controlling 80% of your immune system, crazy important and involved in a lot of symptoms and conditions that most people don't equate it to. So we're gonna break these down right now. You might have warning signs of gut health or need these seven steps that I'm gonna give you if you have a lot of stomach aches, experiencing a lot of nausea, if you have a lot of gas in the digestive system, whether it's bloating or flatulence, if you eat a lot of sugar and have a high sugar diet, or crave a lot of it, that might be caused by a microbe in your gut. I'm gonna break that down, it might not be your fault. It might be them that's dictating how hungry that you are for those carbohydrates. General fatigue, commonly having fatigue, big warning sign the gut's not absorbing properly or you're spending way too much energy digesting. If your sleep is interrupted, especially the timing at which you eat, could be a gut problem. This is a massively underrated sleep interrupter. I've actually measured it myself. Skin irritations, direct correlation. If this filter isn't working, the body goes to the backup filter, which is your skin. So toxins start coming out through here. Really the problem resides in your gut. Autoimmune conditions always involve the gut. 80% of that immune system is controlled by the gut. So we've got to look to the gut if you have an autoimmune diagnosis. And then any sort of food sensitivities, they can be overcome, but you really got to learn how to reset your gut, which I'm going to cover right now. Number one step to helping out your gut, we've got to get stress under control. You can literally feel this when you get anxious 
anxious, you get nauseous, right? When you get anxious, you feel like you're gonna throw up. When you get anxious, you go to the bathroom more. It directly correlates to how well your gut functions. So the best ways to go about this are putting less stress on your digestive system. The best way to do that is to time your eating. Eating after six or seven o'clock is really hard on your digestive system. Your body's starting to go down and down regulate and go into sleep mode. So your nervous system starts switching over. It goes from the sympathetic stress response system and it starts to kick in the rest recovery and nutrient absorption system. That's called your parasympathetic nervous system. So if you're eating later, you're stressing the system still, which is gonna stress your sleep, which is going to make you not be able to adapt the next day to it. Now, that later eating disrupts the sleep and then just sleep itself can actually disrupt your digestive and your gut health altogether. So going to bed earlier, eating earlier, tracking your proper sleep in your environment to see how restful your sleep is. You can get wearables to do this, to know how well are you resting at night to wake up re-energized, when during the day you may be doing your workout that might be impacting to your, your sleep, and I highly suggest some adaptogenic herbs like rhodiola or ashwagandha right before bed to help you get into that deeper, more lowered cortisol healing state. There's a link below on how to get some adaptogenic herbs to help you through that. Number two, gut health tip. Some really good additions you could put into your diet or into your nutrition. Number one, ACV. Before a meal, you down with ACV? Yeah, you know me. Little cap full before a meal really helps with bloating and indigestion and any kind of gas or stomach achiness. Try that, see how it does for a couple weeks. Number two is ginger. Soothes the stomach. So a ginger tea or a ginger lozenger can help with some nausea or upset stomach. And finally, aloe. Aloe coats the stomach, soothes the digestion system, especially with the heartburning type symptoms, or if you have an ulcer or ulcerative colitis, that would be a good one to put in. Number three, portion size. Very important. Eating less makes this thing work less. If you already have a strained digestive system or you have the symptoms and warning signs we talked earlier, eat smaller meals. Doesn't mean eat more frequently. You just gotta start cutting down the consumption. The best way to do this is use a smaller plate or fill your plate up with less food. It's amazing. Psychologically, I'm just a plate, plate clearer. Do you do this? I just clear the plate no matter what's on it. So let's say you're at a restaurant and you go to order, have them box up half the meal before it even gets to you. Guess how much you're probably gonna eat during that meal? Half as much. Your digestive system will thank you so much. Then slow down. I tend to eat very fast. My grandfather did too. But we're doing everything so quickly. Give your body a little bit of a chance. Digestion starts, especially for carbohydrates and starches, in your mouth. So chewing your food properly and then swallowing it, churning it up more while chewing it, slowing that down will make your digestive tract not have to work so hard to get it broken down, especially meat uh, and digesting that up above before it hits your digestive system. Smaller meals, eat them slower, and also consider fasting. Going periods of time, skipping a meal altogether is the ultimate way to give your digestive system a break. Number four, water. Drinking plenty of water is linked to increased diversity of the bacteria inside of your gut. So when you drink more water, a study showed in 2022 that it will increase the diversity of the bacteria in the gut, which means less of bad bacteria that might be causing your indigestion or heartburn or digestive problem in the first place. So it prevents GI infections that might be an underlying cause of what's happening. You don't even know what's going on in there. Lots of water is key. Now I like to add lemon or cucumber to the water. That's gonna aid the digestive system. You could even put a little bit of apple cider vinegar in there for its insulin benefiting impacts and its digestion impact uh, that can have on the body. A little bit of sea salt can help balance and get more water absorb. We've gotta have a lot of water to help out the gut. Number five, using a pre, pro, or post biotic. Your gut has good bacteria in it. It gets destroyed from drugs and infections and sugar and toxic foods and toxins. It needs to be built back up. So building up the bacteria are probiotics. Now, if you have SIBO or something, I would not start with these, but any other digestive condition, you may benefit by putting in good probiotics, but you gotta feed the probiotics feed the army. You could drop soldiers in, but if you don't give them supplies, they're going to die off again. So you want to take probiotics with prebiotics, okay? Prebiotics are going to feed the soldiers, okay? And to help the 
probiotics do their job to get a better outcome, to win the war, also can use postbiotics. Postbiotics are the beneficial production of those soldiers to help win that war. So it's like you're giving them extra ammo to do the job well and to get the actual benefits like gut restoration, better digestion, and a stronger immune system. So a complete pre, pro, and postbiotic taken together is important for an arsenal and an attack by the proper soldiers inside your gut. You can get more information in the description on that below. Healthy foods that are good in these are sauerkraut, kefir, kombucha, anything fermented is gonna be a good source of probiotics and prebiotics. Number six, an anti-inflammatory way of eating might be something worth giving a try. And so in my Make Food Simple book, I break this down. I have videos on this channel about eating anti-inflammatory, giving you a food list. So you know, don't eat these foods that tend to inflame the gut, like dairy, sometimes nuts and seeds, sometimes spices like cayenne pepper might be the cause of it. Um, alcohols, grains, gluten. There's some things that need to be cut out, but there's a, a specific list and you may be surprised, like, wow, I never knew I was irritated by one of those foods. It's a good way to cut them out, figure out if your symptoms get better. If they do, slowly add food groups back in to identify what you're more sensitive to. Then you don't have to spend a bunch of money on food sensitivity tests if you don't want to. But an anti-inflammatory way of eating is a good approach for the gut. Finally, number seven, speaking of just eating nutritionally with anti-inflammatory, what a gut really needs is a full reset. It's a five-step process to remove the toxins from the gut and the excess that might be sitting in there undigested. And then you start to repair the gut and build it back up and seal it. And you replace your nutrition with foods that aren't going to damage it again. And then you can repopulate the bacteria and the enzymes that are needed to break that food down properly. Once you go through that process, that is the perfect time to reintroduce foods that you could be sensitive to, but now that you fixed your gut, you'll find out if you are or not.